I wanted to do this so that, um, you know, that my life can be used to be a testimony of his love and faithfulness um, in any way that God intends it to be. I'm Annie Johnson, and this is my story through his eyes. Well, I grew up as a pastor's kid, and, um, you know, you would think that I would be, you know, the Bible that would be shoved down my throat, but um, my parents never forced me to go to church and never forced me to be a Christian. Um, I grew up going to church and wanting to go to church. Most of my friends were at church, and um, when I was six years old, I remember it was around Christmas, and it was like after Christmas, and I woke up one day, and I don't know, I guess just the Holy Spirit hit me, but I, I just was so interested, and I guess my eyes were opened, and um, I asked my parents if I could accept Jesus in my heart, and so my dad took me in my back guest room and prayed with me, and um, I really did mean it at six years old, and I mean, in my eyes, my faith grew as I grew, and um, you know, when middle school hit, that was pretty much the hardest time, but, um, you know, I struggled up and down, and um, in seventh grade, I started just to get a mindset of putting myself in the center of my life, and, um, you know, I fell, and, uh, but that summer, God wasn't finished with me yet, and um, at that summer at Lake Aurora, uh, my eyes were just open to His glory, and I was just so overwhelmed one night at camp, I just fell on my face and I just gave my life to Him. And um, and from then on, I've just had this whole new understanding of who He is and my eyes have been opened and, you know, of course I fall and, and uh, God is always there to pick me back up again. And it's hard to stay alive in this world, but we just have to keep going. so many of those times where you just feel like God really isn't there for you. Um, you know, I remember one time when I was 13, I was just so sick of this world and I just, I, I was so upset and I just felt, I just felt worthless. And so I just fell just flat on my face, just crying and saying, Lord, who am I? Like, what, why am I here? And I just, I remember getting frustrated because I was like, God, where are you? Why aren't you here with me? And slowly I just had to realize that, you know, we have to take that sin away from our life. We have to be able to, we have to be available to him to come to us. We have to take away um, the hardness and the darkness in our own hearts and um, put him in the center of our life and be available for him to use us. And um, another time was when I was just really upset about something and I, I had to figure it out and I was I didn't know what to do and so I just fell on my knees again and I just said Lord I need to know I need to know and then I just sat up and I realized no Lord I don't need to know I just need to trust in you and that's when like um, like I just started pouring out my heart and um, the words that I was saying turned into his words and it just comforted me and it showed me and I just, you know, in awe of just the Holy Spirit of who he was. But there's definitely, most of the, you know, most of the time we don't have those uh, mountaintop moments at camp or at CIY. But, you know, we're not meant for the mountaintops, we're meant for the valleys. Um, a big role model to me in my life would probably be my sisters because I have two older sisters and I look up to them a lot and I've learned from their mistakes so hopefully I don't make those mistakes but um, I guess I base a lot of my values off of what they were in high school or what they were when I was in middle school um, so I've always looked up to them in that way because I know that they love the Lord as much as I do. Um, being a leader is definitely a tough role. It's, um, you have, you feel like you always have to be strong, 
And as a Christian, I think that we are all leaders and examples um, at school and through anywhere we are. It's hard to maintain, um, you know, as the stereotypical Christian is that they're always perfect, but we can't always be perfect, and none of us are, and we sin as much as everybody else does. We are still tempted by the same things, but, um, you know, being, being that leader, that being God's light is definitely a hard role, but God never said it was going to be easy, and um, we just have to keep being that example and, you know, help other people understand why we fall and that we all do it and I'm not perfect and, um, you know, but really by just not saying anything or by not doing something or, or just having that positive attitude, then uh, people really will see God's light in you. There was one time, well there actually there's been a lot of times where God has been just so real, or, I mean at camp and everything, just been so there, you could just feel it, you know, that you're just, you feel fearless, you're afraid of absolutely nothing because God is there and holding you. And um, at Lake Aurora, when I gave my life to Him, um, we were all praying together and um, I was holding on to my friend Kaylee and uh, all of a sudden our camp counselor she just like ripped me apart from her. I was like, oh no, am I in trouble? And she just like rocked me in her arms and um, she just started speaking in like another language, but um, I thought like maybe it was Spanish or something. I'm not really sure what it was, but um, then she just started speaking and she just said like anoint her of God and everything. And um, you know, and she just kept speaking and it, her words just twisted into like God speaking to me. And, it was like God was telling me who I am to be, and it was just crazy, and I was just so overwhelmed because I had never felt anything like that before. And so that's when I fell on my knees and I gave my life to Him, and they were playing the song, Glory to God, and it was, take my life and let it be all for you and for your glory, and take my life and let it be yours. And that's when I, you know, I gave God my life. But that was definitely a highlight of my life that, you know, He was just so real and so there. Having a faith and a relationship with the Lord is always going to be tough and there's always going to be those hard times where you're screaming and you're saying, God, where are you? But He is there and He knows you better than yourself and His love is uncomprehendable and His equal love for all of us is uncomprehendable and each sin in our life is equal in His eyes and, and um, He truly, truly is there and he is all ears to us. He created us and he, he knows us. Having a faith in God, you, you know, we can't write it down. We can't put it to words. It's something it's, we feel, something we know in, deep in our hearts because God put it there. And, um, you know, maybe you feel like you know, the Lord really isn't there and you just feel like you don't even have a testimony to share, but you do because the Lord, you know, loves you and He sees you. And when we're walking around and we want people to see us for who we are, God sees us for who we are. And we should never be afraid of what's going to come because He knows already when we will breathe our last and He knew when we were going to breathe our first. And so we should never be afraid. We all should um, participate in through his eyes so that we can, you know, of course learn more about each other, but just to, you know, everybody's testimony um, hits us differently. And I love hearing, you know, how God um, touched other people's lives. And God, you know, we each have our own relationship with the Lord, and everyone's, you know, everyone's understanding of God and who he is is completely different. And so it's really cool to see through his eyes through, uh, you know, through other people's eyes too.